Chapter Sixteen of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Bria Snow. Chapter Sixteen: Love of Domestic Concerns. I have incidentally made a few remarks on this subject elsewhere but its importance demands a further and more attentive consideration there are numerous reasons which might be mentioned why a young woman ought to cultivate a love of domestic life and of domestic concerns but i shall only advert to a few of them one every young woman should have some avocation or calling the jews formerly had a proverb that whoever of their sons was not bred to a trade was bred to the gallows but both mohammedans and pagans have maxims among them which amount to the same thing but is that which is so destructive to the character of young men i mean the want of proper employment entirely harmless to young women it surely cannot be true is and deeply to be regretted that there is a fashionable feeling abroad which is the reverse of all this both men and women in fashionable life are apt to regard all labour not only manual but mental as mere drudgery they will labour perhaps if they cannot help it but seldom if they can or at least there seems to be their feeling when they begin a course of industrious action some it is confessed finally come so much accustomed to action that they continue it either as a matter of mere habit or because its discontinuance would now render them as miserable as they were in breaking up their natural indolence and in forming their present industrious habits two she should love the concerns and cares of domestic life because no ordinary employment contributes more on the whole to female health i do not mean to say that there is no other kind of employment which could be rendered equally healthy with doing housework but only that as a whole and especially in the present state of public sentiment this is decidedly the best perhaps in some circumstances moderate labour labour portioned to her strength in the field or in the garden might be healthier were she trained to it but as things and customs are now this can hardly be done three the employment is a pleasant one it has at once all the advantages of a shelter from the severe cold of winter and of seclusion from the sultry sun of summer and the storms of winter and summer both footnote perhaps it may be said that woman actually suffers more from the extremes of heat and cold than man notwithstanding her seclusion this may be true but i still think her constitution is not quite as liable to injury from the weather as that of man besides which she is rather less liable to accidents End footnote. and not only is the housekeeper favoured in these respects but in many others a pleasant well-ordered home is perhaps the most perfect representation of the felicity of the heaven above which the earth affords at any rate it is a source of very great happiness and woman when she is what she should be is thus made a conspicuous agent in communicating that happiness are not then home and the domestic concerns of home desirable are they not agreeable or if not should not every young woman strive to make them so how then does it happen that an idea of meanness is attached to them how does it happen that almost every young woman who can gets rid of them as almost every young man does of farming and other manual labour home affords to young women the means and opportunities of intellectual improvement i do not mean to affirm that the progress they can make in mere science amid domestic concerns will be quite as great in a given time say one year as it might be in many of our best schools but i do mean to say that it might be rapid enough for every practical purpose i might say also that young women who study a little every day under the eye of a judicious mother and teach that little to their brothers and sisters will be more truly wise at the end of their pupilage than they who only study books in the usual old-fashioned 
i might say rather new-fashioned manner it is in these circumstances more strikingly than elsewhere that teaching we give and giving we retain five but once more she who is employed in the domestic circle is more favourably situated i mean if the domestic circle is what it should be social improvement than she could be elsewhere she may not it is true hold so much converse on the fashions or be a means of inventing or especially of retailing so much petty scandal as in some other situation or in other circumstances still the society of home will be better and more truly refined than if it were more hollow and affected and insincere in other words made up of more fashionable materials if to be fashionable is to distort nature as much as possible and if the most fashionable society is that which is thus distorted in the highest degree then it must be admitted that home cannot always be the best place for the education of young women six but lastly young women should love domestic life and the care and society of the young because it is without doubt the intention of divine providence that they should do so and because home and the concerns of home afford the best opportunities and means of moral improvement the prerogative of women the peculiar province which god in nature has assigned her has been already alluded to with sufficient distinctness let every reader then follow out the hint and ask herself whether it is not important that she should love the place and circumstances thus assigned her or whether she who hates them is likely to derive from them the great moral lessons they are eminently designed to inculcate is it asked what moral lessons so mightily important can be learned in the nursery and in the kitchen in return i may ask what lessons of instruction are there which may not be learned there and what moral virtues may not there be cultivated every family is a world in miniature and all the necessary trials of temper and of the character are usually found within its circle are we the slaves of appetite here is the place for learning the art of self-government are we fretful here we may learn patience for a great fund of patience is often demanded and the more so as we are apt here to be off our guard and to yield to our unhappy feelings there are thousands who succeed very well in governing themselves their temper and their passions while the eye of the world is upon them who nevertheless fail most culpably in this respect when at home secluded as they seem to think themselves from observation hence the importance of great effort to keep ourselves in subjection in these circumstances and hence too the value of a well-ordered and happy home are we over fond of excitement home is a sufficient cure for this or may be made so to those who ardently desire that it should be are we desirous of forming our character upon the model of heaven we are assured from the author of holy writ that the kingdom of heaven consists in that simplicity confidence faith and love which distinguish the child in short to repeat the sentence there is no place on earth so nearly resembling the heaven above as a well-ordered and happy family if your lot is cast in such a family young reader be thankful for the favour and strive to make the most of it not merely as a preparation for standing at the head of such a family yourself not merely as a preparation for the work of teaching although for this avocation i know of nothing better not merely because it is your duty and you feel you must do it but because it is for your happiness yes even for your life all character is formed in the school of trial all good or valuable character especially and i repeat the sentiment in no place or department of this school are circumstances so favourable for such a purpose as what may emphatically be termed the home department the family and the church are god's own institutions all else is more or less of human origin not therefore of necessity useless but more or less imperfect 
she who would obey the will of god in forming herself according to the divine model must learn to value those institutions in some measure as they are valued by him and love them with a degree of the same love wherewith he loves them it will here be seen that i value domestic avocations so highly giving them as i do the preference over all other female employments not as an end but as a means it is because they secure far better other things being alike the grand result at which every female should perpetually aim, the attainment of excellence. It is because they educate us far better physically, socially, and morally, and with proper pains and right management they might do so intellectually, than any other employment for the great future towards which we are every day hastening. This home school is, after all, which has been said of schools and education, not only the first and best school especially for females but emphatically the school it is the nursery from which are to be transplanted by and by the plants which are to fill and beautify and perfect if any perfection in the matter is attained all our gardens and fields and render them the fields and gardens of the lord too much has not been too much cannot be said it appears to me in favour of this home department of female education especially as a means of religious improvement young women thus trained would not only be most fitly prepared for the employment which as a general rule they are to follow for life but for every other employment to which they can in the good providence of god ever be called no matter what is to be their situation no matter even if it is merely mechanical, as in some factory, or as an amanuensis, this apprenticeship in the family is not only highly useful, but, as it seems to me, indispensable. Is not mind and health and self-government, yes, and self-knowledge, too, as indispensable to the individual who is confined to a bench or desk, as to any person who is more active? Nay, are they not even much more so since sedentary employments have in themselves as respects mind and character a downward and narrowing and contracting tendency end of chapter sixteen